Hey guys, Mr. Backwork here. In this video, we're going to look at solving inequalities using multiplication and division. So in this first example, we're looking at solving the inequality, and then we're going to graph out our answer on that number line. So we've got 5v is greater than or equal to 45. Now, what we have to remember here is that having 5v, where there's no operational symbol written between the 5 and the v, that really means 5 times v. And anytime we're solving, we want to use inverse operations or opposite operations to help us out. So the opposite of multiplying by 5 would be dividing by 5. So we're going to divide both sides in here by 5. So then we're going to get v is greater than or equal to 9. So I'm going to go over to my number line. I always like to take the number that I'm working with and put it right in the middle. As we work our way to the left, the numbers get smaller. And as we work our way to the right, the numbers get bigger. Now looking at what we've got, we want greater than or equal to 9. Because we include that equals to line underneath that greater than symbol, that means that I'm going to put a filled in circle at the 9. And then we want all of the numbers that are greater than 9. So that's going to head out to the right on our number line. Now as we look at the next example, we've got x over 5 is less than negative 5. So what we have to remember here is that the fraction bar actually means that we're dividing. So having x over 5 really means x divided by 5. So if I want to get rid of divided by 5, the opposite of dividing is multiplying. So we're going to multiply both sides by 5 here. Those 5's will cancel out, leaving me with x is less than. Now when I take negative 5 times 5, that's going to give me negative 25. Now just like we saw in the last one, I like to take that number that I'm working with and put that in the middle. The numbers get smaller to the left. Now when we're dealing with negative numbers, smaller actually means a bigger negative number, a more negative number. So it would be negative 26 and negative 27. As we go to the right, we deal with smaller negative numbers. So that would be negative 24 and negative 23. Now we've got just a less than symbol, so that means we're going to put an open dot at the negative 25. And the numbers that are smaller than negative 25 on our number line, smaller means to the left. So we graph out our arrow heading that direction. In our next one, we've got negative 93 is less than or equal to 3g. Here, we want to remember that 3g really means 3 times g. So to get rid of that multiplication, we're going to divide both sides by 3. Now when we take negative 93 and divide it by 3, I'm going to get negative 31, and that's less than or equal to g. Now anytime we're dealing with an inequality, we always like to put our variable on the left-hand side. So I'm going to flip-flop the order on these. So I'm going to put the g on the left and the negative 31 on the right. Now when I flip-flop the order on those things, I also have to take that inequality symbol and flip it around as well. It was a less than or equal to, so when I flip it around, it becomes a greater than or equal to. Now I'm going to take that number, that negative 31, and I'm going to put it in the middle of my number line. As we go to the left, the numbers need to get smaller, and as we move to the right, the numbers get bigger. Now we want all of the numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 31. We do have that equals to line, so we're going to put a filled in circle at negative 31. And then greater than negative 31, greater than on our number line means that we want to draw our arrow heading out to the right. Now sometimes when you're multiplying or dividing, you have to use a negative number. And anytime you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, we have to flip the inequality symbol around or reverse the inequality symbol. So here we've got negative 3x is greater than 24. So what that really means is negative 3 times x. So if I want to get rid of the negative 3 times x, I'm going to have to divide by negative 3. So what we see happening here is the number we are dividing by is a negative number. So when we write out our answer, we have to flip the inequality symbol around. It was a greater than, we flip it around to being a less than. Now when we take 24 divided by negative 3, we're going to get negative 8 as our answer. I'm going to take that negative 8 and put it in the middle on my number line. As we move to the left, the numbers get smaller, so that actually means more negative. And as we move to the right, the numbers get bigger, so less negative. We've got just a less than with no equals to, so it's going to be an open dot or an open circle at negative 8. And then the numbers that are smaller than negative 8, 
Smaller means we want to shade our arrow heading to the left. In this example, we've got negative 40 is less than negative 5r. Negative 5r really means negative 5 times r. So to get rid of that multiplication, we're going to divide by negative 5. When I take negative 40 divided by negative 5, I'm going to get positive 8. The number I divided by was a negative number, so I have to flip the inequality symbol around. It was a less than, so we write it as a greater than. And then we've got our r. But we have to remember that anytime we're dealing with an inequality, we always want to have our variable on the left-hand side. So I'm going to flip-flop the r and the 8. And when I do that, we also have to reverse the inequality symbol around. So we reversed it because we divided by a negative, but then we reversed it again because we flipped our inequality symbol around. So we've got r values that are less than 8. I'm going to put the 8 in the middle. As we move to the left, the numbers get smaller. And as we move to the right, the numbers get bigger. We want the numbers that are less than 8. There's no equals two lines. So that means open circle at 8. Less than is pointing to the left. So I shade my arrow heading over to the left. In this next example, we've got x over negative 6 is less than 7. x over negative 6 really means x divided by negative 6. So to get rid of that division, we're going to multiply both sides by negative 6. So on the left-hand side, we get x. The number we multiplied by was a negative number, so we need to reverse our inequality symbol. And 7 times negative 6 is negative 42. Now I'm going to take that number that I'm working with and put that in the middle on my number line. As we move to the left, the numbers get smaller. And as we move to the right, the numbers get bigger. We want numbers that are greater than negative 42. There is no equals to line underneath there, so we're just going to graph out an open circle. Numbers that are bigger than negative 42 happen to the right, so I'm going to shade my line or my arrow pointing to the right. Now our last example here is a bit of a word problem. So we've got a student pilot that has to spend 80 hours on flight training in order to earn their private flight license. Now the student has saved $6,000 for training. We want to write out an inequality that we can use to find the possible hourly rates, which we're going to use R to represent that, that the student could afford to pay for the training. And then we want to solve that inequality to figure out what the possible hourly rates actually are that the student can afford to pay. So looking for the important information, we know that the student needs to spend 80 hours on training and they've saved up $6,000. So we want to figure out the hourly rate. Well, we know that we have to spend 80 hours and we're paying an hourly rate. So what that means is for all of those 80 hours, we're going to be multiplying that by whatever the rate amount is. And that's going to give us our total cost. Now we've saved up $6,000. So that means that this total cost, when we take the number of hours times the rate, has to be less than or equal to the 6,000. If they can find it cheaper, great, they'll save a little money, but they can afford to pay up to $6,000. So there's the first part. There's the inequality that represents this situation. Now we want to go through and solve to figure out what the actual hourly rates are that the student would be able to afford. So we've got some multiplying happening in there, and in order to get rid of the multiplication, we're going to have to divide both sides by the 80. So on the left-hand side, we're going to get r is less than or equal to. And then when we take 6,000 divided by 80, that answer is going to be 75. Now we have to talk about what this actually means in the context of this problem. The r value stood for the hourly rate. So having an r value that's less than or equal to 75 means that this student can afford to pay an hourly rate of $75 per hour. So that's going to be our answer. The student can afford to pay up to $75 per hour. If they do pay $75 per hour, that's going to cost them all of the $6,000. But if they find something that's less than $75 per hour, then they're going to save a little bit of money. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.